Hi, I'm John Rogers. I'm with Thermo Scientific in Rockford, Illinois. And I'm going to tell you today about a poster we presented on the uh, development of a human cell-free expression system for the uh, production of stable isotope labeled heavy uh, proteins. So many uh, protein researchers that are uh, trying to quantify analytes are looking for internal standards as proteins that they can spike in uh, to control for capture efficiency, for digestion efficiency, and generally as a quantitative standard. Uh, the nice thing about a heavy protein is it allows you to control for those variables by incorporating heavy isotope amino acids at every position in every peptide of that protein. Many proteomics researchers uh, quantifying proteins would like to have an internal standard a stable isotope labeled protein. That standard can be used for assessing the capture efficiency with a, say, amino-based enrichment for digestion efficiency as well as a quantitative internal standard. The benefits of a protein beyond the capture and digestion efficiency is that the stable isotope labeled protein has uh, isotopes incorporated in every peptide. The workflow with this kit, uh, we start with a, a kit that already has a cell lysate that's been optimized for expression of proteins. Components besides the lysate are a uh, stable isotope labeled amino acid mix, some accessory proteins, and some energy and buffers. To do the reaction, you put in a, a DNA vector that contains your protein of interest or that encodes your protein of interest. In the tube, uh, that DNA template is transcribed and translated uh, into protein. So after six to 24 hours, you can take that tube of expressed protein Purify it using an affinity tag that's part of this expression vector construct. Uh, we can then digest that protein and analyze it by mass spec or use that purified protein as that spike in internal standard. Shown in figure two, we did a titration, titration experiment with heavy amino acids, in this case with arginine and lysine. We've also done it with several other amino acids and just identified, in this case, after 24 hours, one millimolar arginine or lysine were sufficient to incorporate more than 95% heavy isotope labeled amino acid. In the bottom panel, we followed the expression of a protein called green fluorescent protein over a period of six hours. At the beginning of the experiment, there's very little protein, obviously. As progresses over that six hour period, in this case, we synthesized about 80 micrograms per mil. So in a typical reaction, you would make one to 10 micrograms of protein. Over that course of the reaction, initially the tRNAs that are in that lysate are loaded with normal abundance isotopes. And so initially the protein that's expressed is light, but uh, those tRNAs are then recharged with the heavy isotope labeled amino acids and the resulting protein is now heavy. Until at the end of the experiment, you end up with a protein that's 90 or 95 or higher uh, percent incorporation. So to demonstrate the use of this with proteins more relevant than GFP, uh, we expressed uh, a protein called BAD that's in the AKT pathway, uh, cyclin D1, P53, uh, retinoblastoma, uh, the RB protein, and GAP-DH. These span a wide uh, range of molecular weight, so we've gone from small molecular weight proteins uh, to proteins up to 180 or 200 kilodaltons. Across this molecular weight range, we have incorporation of, of better than 90 to, in this case, up to 97% incorporation. And I just have a couple of representative spectra uh, from, uh, from GAP-DH in this case, in, in the upper panel, and from cyclin D1 in the lower panel, showing better than 95% incorporation. The isotope peaks here versus those peaks that are nearly in the grass. So after we express these proteins, we have to purify them. So here's a a Comasi stain gel. This was a Western blot for the GST tag that's on the proteins. This is a, a Comasi stain gel uh, showing the lysate itself. So it has a lot of proteins in that lysate. Uh, we then monitored the flow through, uh, in this case from a, gluta, a GST column. And, uh, and then we alluded competitively with glutathione. So we have a purified band here. Or alternatively, we can purify with a his tag. So that's what's shown in this panel. Uh, we uh, purified with, uh, and alluded with imidazole. In this case, we made a light version of the bad protein. Uh, the vector that, that comes with the kit has three tags to give you flexibility. So it has a GST tag, an HA tag, or a, his, a polyhis tag. So you can use a variety of different tools for purification. Um, one of the things that struck us and we made this protein uh, novel in the set was that uh, we saw the bad protein, but we also saw this other band that co-purified. So we excised the band, digested it, and analyzed on the mass spec and identified it as 
uh, actually a series of 1433 proteins. So we know as biologists that 1433 proteins bind to phosphoserines. So we reanalyzed our data to better understand what kind of modifications might be occurring. So the model here is that AKT phosphorylates BAD and in normally growing cells, BAD is normally phosphorylated and it forms this complex with 1433 proteins that sort of stabilize or, or act as a scaffold. Uh, upon uh, cellular stress, these phosphorylation sites can be dephosphorylated and now BAD can associate with other proteins like BCL2 or BACs and these lead to cell death. So it's a, a, a death response. So looking at the data, what we found is that there are five annotated phosphorylation sites in BAD, and in this experiment, three of those sites were phosphorylated in the expressed protein. In other experiments, we've seen all five of these sites phosphorylated. So the proteins that are expressed by the system appear to be proteins that you would see expressed in a normally actively growing cell. So in conclusion, we've expressed, in this poster, uh, we showed the expression of six uh, stable isolated proteins using this modified human uh, in vitro translation system. Followed the incorporation and found greater than 95% incorporation in reactions that contain more than 50 millimolar stable isotope labeled amino acid if it was incubated for more than four hours. And finally, we uh, co-purified uh, an interacting protein with the bad uh, expressed protein, suggesting that we have proper protein folding as well as relevant post-translational modifications. Thank you for, uh, for watching, and if you'd like to have more information or download this poster, please go to thermoscientific.com slash ASMS.